Okay, so problem six is a little bit trickier. Um, if we take a look here, we're given um, that our f of t this time is radical t times 3t squared minus 35t plus 90. Okay, um, so in this case, we're going to have to use um, the product rule. Okay, you could, if you uh, if you wanted to, you could multiply this radical t, um, and remember that radical t um, is basically t to the one half power. So you could add that through here, and that would be uh, that would be perfectly fine um, as well. Um, but just to kind of give a refresher on the product rule, we'll do it that way. Um, so remember the product rule. You're going to do. You're going to look at the sort of two functions multiplied together that make up the whole function. So we'll look at square root of t, and we'll look at this quadratic that's inside here. Um, and so we'll do the derivative of the first one. Um, so the derivative of square root of t, so that's t to the 1 half. So you bring the 1 half down, so it's 1 half t to the negative 1 half, or um, 1 over 2 uh, radical t. Either way is fine um, in terms of how you think about it. Um, and then the derivative of this, you can just get using um, the power rule. So that's going to be 6t uh, minus 35. So um, for part A, our velocity function, it's going to be that first derivative again. So v of t is going to equal, we'll first do the derivative of this times this original function. So that's going to be 1 over 2 radical t times 3t squared minus 35t plus 90 plus radical t times the derivative of this. So that's going to be 6t minus 35. Okay. Um, now you could just leave it like this, um, but for uh, for much later in the problem, we are going to want to have this a little bit simplified. Um, so we can multiply this one half um, over radical t um, into this, and then we can multiply the radical t into this, and you'll actually um, you'll wind up with some uh, some like terms. So we do the the one half. We're going to get three halves here, and then if we have t over uh, t squared over square root of t, remember square root of t is t to the one half, so it's two minus a half, or t to the 3 halves, okay, minus, now, t over radical t is just radical t, so minus 35 halves radical t, plus, now 90 over 2, that's 45 over radical t, okay, um, and then we're going to have plus, now, radical t times t is also going to be t to the 3 halves, so this is plus 6t to the 3 halves, okay, and minus 35 radical t, okay. Um, so, we have a term with radical t, or two terms with radical t, and we have two terms with t to the 3 halves. Um, so, let's combine them. Remember, 6 is going to be 12 halves plus 3 halves, so we have... 15 halves t to the 3 halves, okay? Um, and then we have, let's see, we have minus 35 halves radical t, and then minus 35 radical t. So 35 is going to be um, 70 halves, okay? So we have negative 35 minus 70, so this is negative 105 halves radical t. Um, and then we just have this last term here, 45 over radical t. Okay. Um, and there we go. So this is our final simplified form for v of t, part a. Um, part b. <clears throat> so we want to know, once again, um, what the velocity is after 3 seconds. So v of 3. So we want to plug 3 in or t, and see what happens. So we're going to have 15 halves. Now remember, um, t to the 3 halves is basically the same as the square root of t cubed, okay? 
So we're going to have the 15 halves times the square root of 3 cubed. Now 3 cubed is 27. Okay, minus 105 halves times radical t, which in this case is radical 3, plus 45 over radical 3. Okay, and we can do a little bit of simplification with this in a little bit, um, but we'll leave it like that for now. So, um, first things first, this 27 here. Remember, 27 is 9 times 3, so we're going to have radical 9 times radical 3, or 3 radical 3. Okay, so this is 3 times 15, 45 halves times radical 3, minus 105 halves times radical 3. Now, 45 over radical 3, we can... Um, what's what's called rationalize the denominator. So we multiply basically by radical 3 over radical 3. And so we get, this is plus 45 radical 3 over 3. Okay. Um, so uh, going through here, we're going to have, let's see, we'll have negative 60, okay, over 2 or uh, just negative 30, negative 30 radical 3, and then 45 over 3 is 15, so this is plus 15 radical 3, which just equals negative 15 radical 3. And negative 15 radical 3 what? So remember, we're looking for velocity, so this is negative 15 radical 3 feet per second, okay? Um, if you plug stuff in to uh, your calculator um, and got a decimal answer, this is about negative 25.981 feet per second. Okay, um, so moving on to part uh, C. Okay, part C. Um, we want to know when the particle is at rest. Um, so here, there's a couple of neat things that you can do. Um, I'm going to show you kind of the more straightforward way. Um, you can, uh, if you're kind of tricky, notice the relationship between the powers um, on t. So we have t to the 3 halves, okay, and then the power decreases by 1, okay, so we have t to the 1 half. And then the power decreases by 1 again. Um, we have 45t to the negative 1 half. Um, so you could notice that that relationship between the powers is the same as the relationship that you have in a quadratic. Um, so you could do something kind of fancy and substitute. You could call it x. You could call it k. You could call it whatever. Um, substitute some, uh, some variable and say let t to the 3 halves equal x squared. Okay, and then you can basically turn this into a quadratic and solve it using the quadratic formula. Um, that's, that's one way to do it. That's how I originally did it when I was looking at this problem. Um, but there is a kind of uh, more digestible way. Um, so what we could do instead is we could factor out 15 halves from everything in here. Okay, and we could factor out not just 15 halves. We also want to factor out... Um, t to the negative one-half, okay, or one over square root of t. So let's see how that looks and how that shakes out. So we're basically factoring out 15 over 2 radical t. So then the question is what's left inside? Okay, so we factor out um, 15 halves. We divide out this radical t. When we divide out, we want to multiply back in and get, um, we want to get t to the 3 halves. So that's going to be t squared, okay? We take out now 15, um, or 105 rather, divided by 15 is going to be 7, okay? Um, so we're going to have here negative 7, and then we'll have t, right? Because when we multiply this 1 over uh, radical t back in, we're going to get this original radical t here. And then um, 45... Um, now, if we had a 2 in the denominator here, this would be 90 over 2. Um, 90 divided by 15 is 6. So we're going to have plus 6 here. Okay. Um, so, again, you factor it, 
and notice you have a factor of this equation um, that is a quadratic, okay? Um, now, no value, okay, no value of t is going to make this factor equal to zero, okay? So the only uh, zeros that we're really concerned with are the zeros of this quadratic factor, okay? So we want to let t squared minus 7t plus 9 equals zero. Um, and with the 9 upside down, that's great. This is 6. That's my mistake. Um, so we want to factor this, okay? So this is pretty easy to factor. We have a negative middle term, positive final term, so that means we have two negatives. And it's pretty easy to see negative 1 and negative 6. Okay, so that means that t equals 1 second and 6 seconds. So at both 1 second and 6 seconds, our velocity is equal to 0. Okay, um, part d then, we want to know um, when is the particle moving in a positive direction. Um, we kind of already um, hit on this here a little bit, but because this is just a fraction and then we're, we're dividing in... Um, square root, which is always going to be positive, um, this, this factor of our velocity function is always going to be positive, okay? Um, so the behavior of it is going to be um, more or less dictated by this quadratic factor, at least in terms of signs. Um, so this is a quadratic with a positive leading term, so it opens up. Um, and so if we have zeros at one second and six seconds, um, that means we're going to have positive velocity before one second, and we're going to have positive velocity after six seconds, okay? So um, in this window here, from one second to six seconds, our velocity is going to be negative, okay? Um, and so... At zero seconds, our velocity is positive, okay? Um, so be t is between 0. Now, at 1 second, it's 0, okay? So we're not going to include it. So between 0 seconds and 1 second, and when t is greater than 6 seconds, our velocity is going to be positive. So that's our answer for part d. Um, part e, okay? Now, the, um, the arithmetic here is just really uh, kind of ugly. So uh, this is a great time to maybe make use of, um, of a graphing calculator or something. So you plug in your original function here into a graphing calculator or something like that, and then you can find the values. But we still want to talk about the windows or the intervals um, that we want to consider when we're looking at our total distance. So the distance is going to be, um, so remember from zero seconds to one second, okay, um, we have positive velocity. From one second to six seconds, we have negative velocity, okay, so negative distance. And then from six seconds on, um, in this case, we're just looking up to eight seconds, um, we're again going to have positive velocity, okay? So we're going to cover positive distance over this window. We're going to cover negative distance over this window. And we're going to cover a little positive distance from t equals six to t equals eight. Um, but we want to kind of turn those all positive because we're just thinking about distance rather than uh, displacement. Um, so our total distance is going to be the absolute value of f of 1 minus f of 0. Okay, so that's our first little window plus absolute value of f of 6 minus f of 1. Oops. Okay, that's our kind of second little window, plus f of 8 minus f of 6. Okay, so this first window here is um, that starting bit when our velocity is positive. The second window here is that middle bit when our velocity is negative. And this third window here is that final bit when our velocity goes back to positive. Um, so you can, uh, you can plug stuff in um, on, on a graphing calculator or, uh, or whatever, um, and, um, and you'll get 
uh, some answers, okay? So um, on this first window here, I think you go about uh, 58 feet, okay? On the second window here, you go about 87.39 feet, and on the third window, you go about 35.05 feet. And that all adds up for a nice, neat total of 180.44 feet, okay? Um, so we want to look um, once again um, at... that little diagram of our motion, okay? So we just want one axis, and that's our position, okay? Starting at, uh, at zero, okay? Um, now notice when, uh, when t equals zero, this whole thing is gonna equal zero. So again, we're starting right at zero, so this is zero seconds. Um, then we go, in that first second, we go 58 feet, okay? So if this is 60 here, we go right up to it. Not quite there. That's our first second, okay? From one second to six seconds, we go back almost negative 30 feet. Okay, so we loop around and here we are at six seconds. Okay, we loop around again and at eight seconds, we're a little over five feet. There's eight seconds. And then the motion just continues in this way. Okay, so that's a motion diagram. Um, notice uh, the motion diagram almost looks um, like a sideways mirror image of the actual function in terms of its shape. Okay, so if you actually graphed position versus time, um, you know, think of it as, you know, you would be going up in position, then down in position, then back up in position, okay? Almost like a cubic function. Um, so that is uh, problem number six, and, uh, and I hope these videos were helpful for you.